I uh, just got in the mail today, June 24th, 2024, uh, the two most recent issues of Doctor Who magazine. This is issue number 602, which came out in late March in the UK. There's the uh, sticker that the um, on the US copies. You can see it's sixteen ninety nine, and this one, which is still in the packing packet, I haven't opened it, the packaging yet. Um, this is six oh three, issue number six oh three, May twenty twenty four, which came out in late April in the UK. You can see the U.S. price is eighteen ninety nine. So uh, for years and years, probably since around twenty fifteen, I've been buying these on eBay from a particular uh, eBay seller who usually charges less than cover price and it has free shipping, which is good. And, um, so I only paid probably a total of $22 or something like that. And these came together just today in the mail. <clears throat> you know, if I had bought them at the store, it'd have been 30 some dollars. So I saved at least like 10 bucks buying them that way. So I thought I'd uh, take a show a quick look here. If you want to look at some of my previous, um, uh, YouTube videos, I have um, a few showing my Doctor Who magazine collection. Uh, Doctor Who magazine has been running since 1979. Like I said, this is issue number 602. And these two these two issues are the current, most current issues of Doctor Who magazine. I think this one, 603, I think this one is the most current one in the U.S. Because in the U.S. they tend to come out about a month after they're released in the U.K. Um but yeah, 60, issue 602 and 603, I have pretty much every issue from number one to these issues, uh, with the exception of about 16 issues that I'm missing. So that's a lot of a lot of reading. Um, I've actually not even seen any of Shooty Gatwa's episodes yet, which are airing on Disney+, Plus, which I don't have. Um, but this is... Uh, to me, not really about the Doctor anymore than any particular actor playing the Doctor. I've been a fan of this magazine since the late 1980s um, when I first started reading it. In fact, I had a letter printed in uh, an issue like back in 1991. So uh, to me, it's just a, uh, you know, I'm a fan of the TV show, Doctor Who. So now at this point, I'm just uh, also sort of a fan of the fandom of Doctor Who. Um, let's jump ahead here. I, I think there was a, here we go, a uh, thing about William Hartnell. Um, I guess an interview that he gave it in the 1960s. I look forward to reading this. I have not read any of this yet. And this section used to be more towards the beginning. This is one of my favorite, uh, sections of the magazine where they talk about a particular time. Um, this one says, uh, Saturday, April 16th, 1966. Um, and here's the thing about the old time special effects. And then you have the comic strip written by Alan Barnes and drawn by Lee Sullivan, who drew many of the old Doctor Who, uh, comic strips. And then the fact of fiction way back in the day, Andrew Pixley used to write the articles, these in-depth, uh, truly in-depth, you know, um, articles about each story. Uh, but this one was, the fact of fiction is now written by Ellen Barnes. And then finally, at the end of the magazine, you have the reviews of current Doctor Who releases. And that's that. So it looks like an all right issue. I mean, even, you know, for someone like myself who isn't watching the current Doctor Who, uh, not that I have anything against it, I just uh, haven't uh, seen it. Um, there's still stuff of interest, and especially looking forward to that, reading that William Hartnell. Uh, thing. Now we're going to open this up. I've shown in previous videos how I uh, open these up. The temptation is op to open it up from the bottom or something, but I prefer to open it up from the top. We're going to see how, there we go, you can see there's an opening right in there. So we're going to just carefully try to separate that. I'll show it better with my, without tearing it too much. There we go. That's going to be kind of sticky, so it might be better for me to just cut it. 
We'll see if I can pull it apart there. Well, this one's coming along nicely. Oh, there we go. I'll just have to do the other side. And just try to do it without destroying the wrapper. Because I like to keep them in the wrapper. You know, if at all possible. Sometimes they have really big wrappers, which are kind of like too big for uh, the boxes that I put the magazines in. There we go. Let's see how it's done. And you kind of want to rip more on the back, if, poss if at all possible, than on the front, because usually the back is less important. There we go. Now the... A difficult part here is there's a lot of stickiness here. So when I pull these out, I'm going to try to do it somewhat quickly so it doesn't all stick to, to the packet. There we go. Nicely done. I still have a packet that I can uh, put them back into. And let's see what's in the issue. All right. Wow, pretty cool. So whatever this is, a little little thing there. This little, I might make a good thumbnail if it shows up. Maybe do it like that. Hmm. So, and then the, the magazine and this little uh, comic strip thing, it looks like. Hmm. I think I said I'm uh, reading this for the first time in memory of Paul Neary, an artist who passed away, who was editor of Doctor Who Weekly back in the uh, around 1980, after Des Skin was editor. And so some of the comic strips looks like they're reprinted from early issues of Doctor Who Weekly. And there's the thing of Des Skin remembering Paul Neary. So this is just a little bonus magazine that comes with it. Now, sometimes if you get a uh, Doctor Who magazine later, you know, after uh, after it's no longer new, sometimes you might just see the magazine itself in the back issue bin. But uh, when you get them new, it's a good time to get them with all the little bonus features before they uh, have been separated. Alrighty, so this is the current issue. Like I said, I've not seen any of this before. You're, we're seeing it both for the first time together. I'm just going to take a quick quick skim through this and see if there's anything that jumps out, you know, like that William Hartnell thing did for me before. So, as usual, you're going to get a lot of coverage of the most recent episodes. Here's the one with the last chord, I think it's called, the Devil's Chord. Meet the Beatles. Of course, there's been criticism that these guys don't look anything like the Beatles. You know, you can see uh, you be the judge. He looks a little like Ringo. I don't think he looks like George at all. John Lennon and Paul McCartney? I don't think so. Nope. But, oh well. There must have been a reason they chose him for these, uh, for this. But yeah, definitely not the Beatles. Like I said, the closest, uh, closest probably that Ringo guy, I mean, at least from the photos. So lots of stuff about the current stories, and then about the Beatles uh, in the 1960s, John Lennon with a Dalek, and I think that. Uh, oh, what's this about the? Uh, Original Stargate, uh, Starfield uh, scenes from when Doctor Who, uh, back in the day, how they were done. There's probably already been lots of stuff like that, you know, in previous Doctor Who specials and stuff. It's In a way, it's kind of like, uh, you know, how much more is there to say about Doctor Who that hasn't already been said? But uh, they keep finding a way to do it. And then finally you have uh, another fact of fiction, and then you're going to have a reviews. So that's a very quick look at what's in the issue. 
So, pretty cool. And worth it for 20, bu 20 uh, some bucks for me. Uh, so that's that. You know, obviously, if you were to buy them at the store, Barnes & Noble, they're, or someplace like that, they're going to be more expensive. Uh, but if you look around on eBay, sometimes you can, or other, you know, online sellers, sometimes you can find a good bargain. So that's it. Thanks for watching.